Welcome to the Dental Business Guide Podcast. From money to marketing to management, this podcast will help you run a better dental business. Welcome back to the Dental Business Guide. I'm George, and today I'm with Nikita and Chris. And today we're just going to talk about you know ways in which you can grow your practice. So uh, there's lots of things and all that that you can do to grow your practice. But you know, Chris, let's start off with you. How can you grow a practice? Uh, what's the first way you can grow a practice? Uh, well, I'd say the first free way you can do it, the best free way, in my opinion, as a digital marketer, would be to optimize your website for SEO. So SEO, search engine optimization, is basically how good your website is at ranking in things like Google or Yahoo. So, and it's, and it's free. It's a free way of doing it. It's organic. You don't have to pay for it. So the better your website is, the higher it will rank. So in, in my opinion, that's the best free way to do it. Get your website as good as it can be. Um, get it ranking as highly as in Google as possible, yeah. and you'll more people will find you if they type in dentists in your in their area, and yours is the first one that comes up. They're more likely to go to you first. So that's probably the best way, in my opinion, to do it um, for free. So if I was um, a dentist listening right now, what I would do is go on my website and either download something like Rank Math or Yoast. There's loads of free plugins you can get that will help you with your SEO. Get it as good as possible, optimize it all, and you'll really start to see a difference. You'll you'll get more leads, you'll rank higher in Google, and it's all free, basically. So that's, in my opinion, that's the, the number one thing I do. Amazing. And that's the thing is, is, you know, all these tips we're going to talk about, they're all, they're, they're, they're three ways in which you can grow your practice. Exactly. That's the thing, you know, with with the way COVID's going on that lot, it's things are on a strict budget. And so I, anything free nowadays is a Absolutely. blessing. Yeah. And SEO is a great way of doing it. It's the best way to get to the top of Google for free organically without paying for it. Yeah, spot on. Uh, Nikita, have you got an, another tip for us? Yeah, so another way, of course, is social media, So, um, which is free to set, to set up. So you can set up anything like Facebook. Instagram would be the two main things for a dental practice, I would say, to set up. Definitely Facebook, definitely Instagram. Um, again, it's free to do. Um, a business account, I would say, go for if you're a dental practice. Again, that is free to do as well. All you have to do is link your Instagram business account with your Facebook page just make sure that's done um because people do look at your businesses now through social media a lot more especially with everyone working from home being at home a lot more with covid um people are scrolling on social media and in terms of like i say millennials we are looking on social media for we're we're using it more as a search engine like google so if if i want to find something i don't know like a hair salon or a beauty salon or a dentist i will search on instagram first i don't know why it's just a thing i think that young people are doing nowadays and it's just automatically if you know the top five dental practices come up in london and they have a really good social media page a really great instagram you know don't even doesn't even matter about how many followers you have so don't worry about you know not having thousands of followers it's just the content you're putting on your page if that's really good and you're consistent and you're consistently posting every single day you're engaging with your uh, patients or your followers on there then that's the way to start with it, I would say. Um, it's important to just make yourself known. So, you know, go for it. And again, like I said, don't worry about the followers. It takes time. Social media takes time to build up that platform and build up that page. But it's a great way to, you know, get patients through the door. Spot on. Amazing. So you really, I think social media nowadays is one of those things. If you're not having it, you're stupid, basically. <laughs> um, so you know, it more or less really like, especially for businesses, you know, it's a great way to engage with your, um, with your patients, with your clientele. And I, yeah, I think if you're not using social media and especially with you, Instagram, I think you're definitely, you're not going to thrive in this, in today's market. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, e- it's easy these days for anyone to go on social media, especially as, as well with, you know, how well your business is doing reviews, put that on there, put that on your Facebook, put that on your Instagram. It's just all about, pushing pushing content and yeah like I said don't worry about the numbers and the followers it's not about that it's just you know are you engaging people want to see how true and real you are as a business not you know that you're just a robot yeah no exactly that um Chris is there any more you want to add on at all or yeah there's there's so much I want to add on um (laughs) so my next point is kind of related to my first one is to optimize for speed um a little bit different to SEO but very much related but speed is about to become pretty much one of the biggest ranking factors for Google. So it used to be your keywords, it used to be user experience, that kind of thing. But now Google's really worried about speed. So if your website takes a long time to load, it's going to start doing really badly from about May, I think the new rules come in. 
Um, so again, if I was a dentist listening, what I would do is go right now on your website and get all your images and reduce the sizes and reduce the resolution. So if you've got a page that has two or three images that are about a megabyte each, you need to get rid of them right now and replace them with ones that are 100 kilobytes max. Okay. Um, yeah, because they're really slowing your website down. And in a couple of months, that's going to start becoming a real problem for Google. So there's a few tools um, for free. Again, you can get online. Um, literally just Google something like website speed checker. Um, okay. And the first five or six, there'll be free tools. Put in your website, put in certain pages and see how fast they're loading. If any of them are loading, are taking more than two seconds to load, you need to work on them because two seconds is the maximum really that it should be. So yeah, check all your pages, check your website and speed it up as much as you can. Um, again, there are free plugins you can get like Lazy Loaders one. Um, and what that does is it essentially makes sure that things load in the correct order. So if you've got a web, a web page with an image again, that's five gig, um, megabytes, that's halfway down the page, Lazy Load will make sure it only loads when it has to so that it's not slowing the entire website down. Okay, that's clever. Yeah, so there's loads of free websites, uh, loads of free plugins. Get out there, find them, use them, and speed your website up. Get, in a couple of months, you're going to start seeing a real difference if you do that. Amazing. So, Chris, you're saying all these things about plugins. Is this, is this specifically tailored towards WordPress, yes? Yeah, I mean, you can get them for pretty much anything. Like Wix, they have plugins as well. But, I mean, WordPress is pretty much the biggest um, free platform for people to make websites. So you'll find that most of them are made on, on uh, WordPress or a similar platform nowadays. And yeah, there'll there'll be a section for plugins. Just type in there, um, speed, optimization, that kind of thing. Uh, Lazy Loader especially is a good one. And yeah, download it, use it, and speed your website up. Spot on. Brilliant. Um, Nikita, is there anything else for social media at all we need to know about? Yeah, the three well, ways to grow your practice? Or? Yeah, so creating content as well um, is definitely something that you should be doing. So promoting your brand, engaging with your with your um, followers, your patients, like quality content as well. I think, um, you know, just you can, I think as well, post every single day, even if it's a something, a picture, a video, post something because it shows you're willing to put in the, you know, you're putting in the effort every single day. It doesn't matter about how many likes you're getting. It's just people will see you're actually posting. So yeah, creating content, whether that's written, whether that's on social media, whether you're writing blogs, um, whether you're uh, creating videos, ads, social media pictures, um, even some things like um, on the on Instagram um, has loads of different features like story features. So, you know, you can actually really engage with your followers, your patients over the stories. You can do quizzes, you can do polls, you know, then you really get to see the insights, the data, you know, even if you say, you know, are you interested in Invisalign? Yes or no. You can see how many people actually want to come to your practice to get Invisalign. You could say, oh, um, you know, just put different, different polls every week, make it like a weekly thing. Um, again, with creating content, like um, a lot of people are doing blogs. So find out what's trending, find out what's happening right now, what's really popular and start start writing on it, really. Um, yeah, again, like there's so many different things you can do, you know, YouTube videos, creating videos of your practices, um, creating videos of your team, your team members, pictures of your team, um, all the dentists that you work with, um, I guess, email. Again, social media posts is so broad, so you can kind of do anything and everything. There's no you know, limit to social media of what you can and can't do. Um, it just depends on your brand and how you want to be seen on your page. Uh, but yeah, just give it a go. I think don't be scared about it and just just try with something and you won't you won't know unless you try and you'll see some things work more than others but yeah just just uh, monitor that as well and, and kind of keep yeah. a balance don't just do video 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 do you know picture video blog um ad i don't know just mix it up a bit so yeah. definitely it will uh, broaden the business and it will you know keep people engaged and just make sure that you are engaging with them make sure you're commenting back to comments that they're leaving you and um even with um you know if you get any reviews just say thank you make sure you're engaging back with with people because i think that makes a difference yeah that's one thing for sure is I, i've always learned is just create content don't stop don't just have a a dry spell if you will of like two months where you've not actually posted anything it ain't going to help anybody. I think, as you're saying, the idea is to post every single day something relevant, but not the same content each day. So nothing, not not like video every single day, like photos, video, mm -hmm. story, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Yeah, consistency is key. So just yeah, be no, consistent. Definitely. So every day just post something at least. Yeah, perfect. Um, And Chris, let's, let's go back to you. So 
you know, again, what, what else can we do to grow a practice? Now, as you said, you've got hundreds of things you want to talk about. So well, what's another one you can, you can list off? <laughs> um, another one that I think is actually quite um, overlooked at the moment is uh, direct emails. So once upon a time, direct email was one of the key ways you um, engage with your clientele, one of the key ways you marketed online. But it's kind of falling out of favor lately because people have this idea that um, audiences don't want to listen to <clears throat> listen to you online anymore they don't want to receive all these emails they don't want um uh they want spam essentially Mm. but email still does really really work so what i would do is go on your website and put a contact form on so you've already got your contact form um, presumably put another one on and just literally all you want is their name and their email address don't ask for any more information and say sign up now for our newsletter or sign up now to hear about our offers or our discounts and then when people start giving you their emails and you you know then that you're allowed to email them for GDPR, start emailing them. Come, come up with a newsletter. It doesn't have to be once a month if you don't have the time. It could be once a quarter. Um, throw in a couple of discounts. Throw in some uh, offers. Throw in a referral um, program. Something that engages them, something that gets them um, wanting to come to you. But that would be a really, really easy free way of getting more leads, essentially. Put a newsletter contact form on your website get those emails in and just start emailing them. All, all, all they can do is ignore you. That's the worst that will happen. Yeah, so no, get, exactly. So get some offers, get some discounts, email them out there. Um, even if they're not offers of discounts, just let people know what you offer. Um, they might not know that you offer Invisalign. They might not know that you have a hygiene stuff in, in the practice. So let them know. Um, get their emails and let them know what you're about. And again, you'll see more leads coming in. That's amazing. Because yeah, the thing is, like, you know, five, six years ago, before GDPR was even a thing, you know, the amount of times you do anything on a website, there's no there's no consent or anything. You just get yeah. sent emails and constantly. Exactly. I remember having to go through hundreds of emails. I have to go unsubscribe, unsubscribe, unsubscribe. <laughs> yeah. But nowadays it's easy. You can actually um, consent to which websites you want to have um, your emails from. And obviously, as I said, like you know, websites they're now having incentives for you to sign up for those web web browsers, like you said, a sign exactly. up now for um, for offers or exclusive offers and promotions. You know, it's, I think, you know, definitely, as you said, like you know, emails are kind of a best kept secret in a way of, um, mm. of trying to gain more traffic and everything. Yeah, definitely at the moment, especially for, like, I mean, dentists, you've got, you've got your um, CRM there. You've got your client list. You've probably got a load of emails for them. Use it. Start emailing them. Just contact them. Let them know that you're still around. Let them know what you're offering. Let them know what they can get at the practice. And yep. again, you'll, you'll see an increase in leads. Amazing. Well, thank you much, everyone, for listening. That was our five free ways to grow a practice. That was number one, optimize your SEO. Number two, email your patient list. Number three, optimize for speed. Four, create content. And five, set up and improve your social media channels. Um, thank you, Nikita and Chris, for sitting down with, and chatting with us. And um, we'll catch you on the next one. Thank you very much. Thank you. See you next time. Thanks for listening in to the Dental Business Guide podcast. We welcome your feedback. And if you're enjoying it, please let your friends know too. Until the next time on the Dental Business Guide podcast.